Good evening, this is Edward and Anne at sonsofgod.com, and this is School of the Prophets. It's Monday, December 14 of 2020. We're going to talk about awareness again this evening. Probably the most important thing that, 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 uh, that we're dealing with right now. In the midst of the, of the onslaught of illusion and deception, it is imperative that the sons of God rise up into a level of clarity and awareness not born out of the product of the soul mind deduction, but born out of the internal change within the spirit, where you begin to see between the lines, you begin to see what no one else can see. You see that which is not here, but yet is very much here. We're still too swayed by the illusion that is being propagated in the earth and all of the the trappings that go along with it and all the the rumors and the innuendos and the, 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 the dialogue that is going out. There is so much in misinformation. I cannot tell you how much misinformation is being propagated in the earth by people that think they're doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing, and they're reaching in, but the problem is they don't see. I tell you, this world is blind, and they know it not. And there's only a handful, and I don't even know where those handful are scattered, that probably have any level of sight. You can forget it with Christianity They are as blind as blind can be. And all the theologians and all the Christian pastors and all of that, they're absolutely blind. But I know they're trying their best to figure it out, to dig into what's happening, and then to report it. Say, hey, this is what's happening. But you know, it's all an illusion. All of it. The blindness in the earth is on an unprecedented level, nothing like we have ever seen before, because there are not that many people who have truly broken into a walk in the spirit. I'm not talking about a walk in the soul, because that's all New Age is about, and that's all that Christianity is about, is the soul realm and the gifts of the spirit. But really, it's all soul. It's the day of the church age, and we're still living in the day of the church age. Even though God has opened the portals to walk into the day of spirit, it doesn't mean that people are walking in the day of spirit. They're walking in the day of soul. And Satan is having a heyday because people are believing whatever. Whatever their mind deducts, whatever comes along that, that, that seems to fit in to their paradigm. And they become unwitting tools of Satan. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whether it's the media, the TV, the news, which are blatant uh, voices of Satan, or whether it's church leaders or Christian people or, or spiritualist people that are trying to do the right thing, but they still don't have a clue. And so all they're doing is emulating and voicing the darkness. I hate to put it out that way, but, but that's what it is. It's, it, is, it is beyond critical where we are right now. Beyond critical. Authority only works when you have sight. When you have sight, then the authority works. But only then. Otherwise, you're just a shotgun out there. I bind this, I bind that. I loose this, I loose that. Hope I got the ground covered. But it doesn't work. The sons move in the authority of the kingdom because they know what the Father's doing and they 
hear what the Father is saying. It's no no different than what the Lord Jesus Christ walked in. And that's why he, God scourges every son. He scourged Christ, put him up on the cross. He's not doing anything different with the sons of God that he's raising up during this time. He is scourging every son. And if you haven't been going through and continuing to go through the scourging process, then you're not a son. Not yet. Not yet. You know, we're looking for the confirmation of sonship. To it, the redemption of the body. Romans 8. But I'll tell you, there's a precursor to the sign of sonship. And you know what that is. It's a scourging. For God scourges every son whom he receives. Even those sons who have not yet manifested sonship by which the change of the body comes. Yes, we're waiting for the redemption of the body, the resurrected body, the final confirmation of our sonship. But we already had the confirmation of sonship because God's been scourging every son whom he receives. You've already got the qualifications. We're just waiting for the finishing touches. This whole issue of awareness is so critical and it underlies just about everything that we've talked about in the books. Because everything is about coming up higher. Well, what is coming up higher? Define that to me. It's coming up in your frequency. It's coming up in your vibration. All of a sudden, and that that is a very physical thing. Because you, you feel that, you know that. You begin to experience that. That is not just something you take by faith. As God pulls you up, your frequency changes. Do you know what that's like? I don't know if we've ever sat back and said, well, what does it mean to change? What does it mean to become a son as we are birthed into the realm of light? Well, God's been delivering us out of the domain of darkness, this we know, into the, you know, the, 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 the into the, the, the glory of the kingdom of of, <laughs> of the Lord. I forget how it, how it, it gets quoted. doesn't matter. He's birthing us into the realm of light progressively deeper and deeper. Is that an experience or is that a theory? Well, is sonship an experience or is sonship a theory? Because if everything to you is theory, then you're on a different path. This is not about theory. This is not about book learning. This is about an experience because the changes going on within you cannot be quantified, cannot be hidden, cannot be taken away from you. Someone can't talk you into it and say, hey, you're being caught up. Oh, I believe, I believe. Oh, you know what? You're not. Okay, I guess not. No, you know when you know. And God is changing you within you. That's where it really is important. It's not anything outward. You know, oh, he just gave me a million dollars. He gave me a new car. I, You know, all of these things. That's just outward stuff. That, that, That doesn't mean anything. It's the deep inward changes. So what happens? Well, we know that everyone, everyone on the face of the earth has a unique frequency. They have a unique vibration. In fact, let's jump off the cliff here a little bit. Everyone, whether they're on this side of the veil or that side of the veil, have a frequency, have a vibration to them. Years ago, a dear friend of mine, Bob McLean, appeared to me, and we were talking, and he was trying to convey to me at that time. That was many years ago. 
And I, you know, I understood mentally, but I, I was still, I couldn't quite get it. But he was saying, let me impart to you, let me tell you what my frequency is. It's like tuning a radio. And, and you know, this is kind of a crazy example, but hold that thought. What do they do in the Old Testament? And I, I forgot what what they were called. They weren't sorcerers, or they, they were, I think they were necromancers. And necromancers, if I'm not mistaken, had the ability to call up the dead. You remember the witch that called up Samuel. I believe it was Samuel. Samuel is, you know, sleeping. Gets up, says, "What? What? What? You know, who called me?" Well, that witch was able to, whether she understood exactly what she was doing or not, but she was dialing in to his frequency and knew how to access it and communicate. You say, well, that sounds pretty evil. That's bad. The Lord, you know, very much speaks against that. Well, of course, of course he speaks against witchcraft, necromancy, and all of the dark, stuff out there we won't you know can't even imagine there's so much dark stuff out there but a principle is a principle is a principle when god sets a principle in order it is done does it mean the the dark side the enemy can't access it no they can access it too the sons of the darkness how does it go in the in the gospel it talks about how the sons of darkness and I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit, but the sons of darkness are further along than the sons of light because they're more adept at what, uh, at what the principles are. You'll have to look that scripture up or you can email me. I'll, I'll find it for you. But um, so what happens? The sons of darkness are able to... to access certain spiritual realities based on a knowledge of spiritual principles that exist. Whereas the saints of light, embroiled in the religious spirit, don't quite get it, and they're kind of dragging along. Nevertheless, let's go back. I'm getting off here. So, necromancy, the ability to communicate with the dead i.e. they know the frequency. Okay, so that's the dark side of it. There's a positive side. And the prophecy has been for many, many years now that as we get closer into the Father's kingdom, as we rise higher in the Spirit, the veil between the cloud of witnesses and the saints of light is going to become paper thin. I mean paper thin, and it is right now paper thin, which means the bleed through begins to happen. And you'll have moments, and there's no rhyme or reason, just moments out of the sky blue, there's a breakthrough. And, and they're there in front of you, and, or, or their image comes to your mind, or a word comes to you, and, and, and it's there, and then it's gone. Or you might have a short dream. You might take a short nap and all of a sudden there's a breakthrough. It's just random. I mean, these things are random. You can't control them. They come, they go because the veil is becoming paper thin. So to complete the story, a dear friend, Bob McLean, appears to me. And he's, trying to tell me, okay, this is my address and you can communicate with me whenever you want, but this is how you reach me. In other words, this is my phone number. Now, you're not going to reach me at any other phone number, but this one here, you can. Now, I know when the vision and the experience came, it was spirit to spirit. He was educating my spirit. Certainly not my mind or soul. It wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. 
but the Spirit was receiving it, that the Spirit might be able to begin to walk in it. And the more we have this conjunction of our, of our spirit, soul, and body into just the singleness of one, you know, we're not really meant to be three individual, you know, spirit, soul, and body. We're really meant to be just one. The spirit, soul, and body, one, and, and we're one before God within ourself. And um, the spirit moves in the ascension over the physical and over the uh, soul. And you're able to begin to walk into the deeper spiritual things because your spirit's been prepared, taught, shown, and you, you begin to know principles. I mean, we're talking about principles of the spirit. The enemy knows the principles of the spirit very well. We are still learning. And there are many, many principles that exist that we don't even know. I mean, we're talking principles of the kingdom. It's the same thing as principles that exist in the natural plane. There's the principle of gravity. What goes up must come down. It's a cause and effect. It happens. You don't have a choice. You throw something up, I tell you, you better get out of the way, it's going to come down. In the spirit, the same thing exists. There are principles that exist that, that are how the spirit world functions. The spirit world is just not a random plane in the Father's home. It's just a, a random plane that just doesn't have rule and order or symmetry. It's just chaos. No. The spirit world is very structured, very orderly, very organized, like the natural plane. It functions under laws, under rules, under principles. And it's a matter of learning those principles. Paul talks about the secrets. God will give you the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, the hidden things of, of the spirit. Well, what are we talking about? In, in, in real time, we're talking about learning the principles that govern the world of spirit. Because I tell you, where you're headed is out of the plane of the soul and the plane of the physical, the plane of this natural order and realm. You're headed into a plane and world of spirit. And that world of spirit has a completely different set of rules, principles, and order, and how it functions. Things do not function in the realm of spirit like they do in the realm of the natural. In the realm of spirit, you can think, just think, on a place that you want to be, and you can translate that instantly because you don't travel by virtue of getting in a car and having to go through hours or get an airplane. The spirit world is not limited to that. It's not limited to time. You can go past, forward, present, whatever the Lord allows. It's a completely different world. You can be wherever you want in an instant. And that's just, we're just barely touching, touching the surface uh, of what controls the world of spirit. And we are being we are being pulled out of a paradigm, of a track of consciousness that has been limited to the natural plane. In fact, there's a chapter in one of the books called Tracks of Consciousness. You should read it. Because science has determined proven, shown, you know, that the mind develops tracks. It grooves, if you will. And your way of thinking, and this is super oversimplified, your way of thinking goes down those tracks. And whether you like it or not, you could, you could call it habits, 
uh, you could call it a paradigm, but your perception of reality, of what's possible, what's not possible, is governed by the track that your mind has gone down. And, and, and everyone's is different. And so you could say, well, that track, that road, that highway was, was carved out by your own inner consciousness that created a track. You could say, well, look at the Buddhists, for example. The Buddhists, some of them, can manifest things just out of thin air. And they've proven that, documented it, no big deal. Well, why can they do it, but you can't? Because they have a different track within their cerebral cortex that says, this is not impossible. I can do this. And why is it when the Lord says, you know, all things are possible to him that believes, and you say, Lord, you're killing me here. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe till I'm red in the face. What's missing? The track. You're on the wrong highway, son. Now I'm going to have to get you off that highway. Because if you're on the right highway, anything is possible. You can do anything. And that is the truth. But the problem is, I hate to say it, but you're living a lie. You know, I, I don't want you to be too bummed on it here. It, 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 but you've accepted limitation where it's not valid. You're living a lie that says, well, I can, but I can't. And that's not the truth. Unfortunately, your sojourn, since I sent you here, and as you've been maturing and growing, has created these highways within your mind. And I've got to get you off of that highway because that highway, the destination isn't going to take you where you want to go. In fact, you know, you can't get there from here. This, this highway is not going to do it. I need to get you over here to Route 66. Or whatever. Ah. So what's involved? Oh, nothing short of the fire, uh, the crucifixion, dying out, being scourged, being open, being teachable. And that's pretty hard for a lot of people that come to the table with a lot of smarts. And they already know it all. And you can't really teach them. So for them, it's going to take a lot longer because God first has to break their legs. Then maybe they'll begin to open up and they can, and God can teach them, begin to move them down the road. Thing of it is, got to get off this highway. Got to get off this highway because this is this is this is not not where it's at. And you're not going to get there from here. So. That's been uh, the the plight, and I'm trying to kind of catch my thought here where I where I was about five minutes ago. <laughs> Thing of it is, what has to be done now in the earth by the sons of light will not be done from a realm of limitation. It has to be done from a realm of unlimitedness. God has to pull us out of this highway, of this realm of limitation. And so the barrage that's going into the earth right now is ratcheting up. And I, I said it was coming, and it's, it's, it's here now. I mean, we saw this a few months ago. That the flow, the influx of the water into the earth was going to continue to grow. And translated, that would basically be the negative uh, flow out of the mouth of the dragon has been ramping up. 
and it's getting darker and getting darker. And nobody has a clue what's really going on. There's really not that much awareness. And a lot of the purpose of these words that we bring, there is no instant miracle where I can just speak a word or God can speak a word and all of a sudden we're completely transformed. It's a process, even though the process is quickening, but it's, it, it, it's something of a process for God to yank us out of this level of the natural plane and bring us into a world that functions by a completely different set of standards. You know, like we said earlier, we're talking about the principles of the kingdom. We're talking about the principles that drive and run and dictate the world of spirit. And why the battle has been so difficult is because Satan knows these principles very well. And as he continues to use them against the saints of light. We've got to be very careful not to form opinions right now. Not to take the, 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 the garbage that's coming out and a lot of people don't even recognize it as garbage. They say, oh, well, I just got this information. I got an inside story here. Yeah, well, chances are it's probably garbage. You know, we've got to be so careful what we feed on. And to be very honest, most people are feeding on a lot of junk, junk food. And, um, and it's just pouring into the plane of the earth, whether it's out of the mouths of the media or Christian you know, uh, pastors or God knows wherever. And God is endeavoring over time to get us off this track, to get us off this plane of consciousness that we uh, have found ourselves kind of embroiled with, that we might see everything from a completely different level. I mean, at, until we get out of this, we're basically on the same uh, wavelength as mankind. My, mankind goes down certain modalities of thought. And until we get off this track, we're kind of going down that same freeway. Um, but, you know, thankfully, the Lord's been pulling us off this freeway for some time. Um, but we're not quite where we need to be yet. It's kind of like in the Gospels as I, I see men as trees walking, you know? Oh, well, that's great, wonderful. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm seeing something different. Yeah, but that's not enough. You're just in transition. We've got to see it more clearly. So in all of this, we're talking about our spiritual awareness And that's, that's been goading us, driving us, because we're not aware as we need to be yet. And yet I know the army in the book of Joel is an army that sees clearly and hears clearly and follows clearly the direction of the Lord as he speaks to them. None of you need anyone to come and teach them, you know, teach you of the voice of the Lord. You know, you have, it's, that's how it goes in Scripture. You have no one, you have no need of anyone to come and teach you. You already know. You already know. 
But the unwrapping hasn't happened deep enough. We haven't torn back the scales deep enough off the eyes. And so that's still been in the process. Lord, tear back the scales that I might see and might hear. It's time for the saints of light to function with a great deal of power and authority only as the Lord directs because there's going to be a lot of things that we're we're not supposed to touch. It has to go its course. But right now we have to get off this highway. I, I think that's pretty much covers what we want to talk about this evening. Everything is in transition. Always in transition. Our life is a life of transition. Your life is a life of transition. But what I want from the Lord tonight is that this word impart just a little bit more of a an awareness of what is here, what is coming, what we need to be reaching into, and what to expect. God hasn't brought us this far just to let us, you know, uh, 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 run in place. But we have to get out of a way of seeing that it's been sterile. We have to learn the principles of the kingdom and begin to use them. We have to be aware of what's unfolding in the earth right now. And no one can do that for you. I can't do that for you. Because all that would be would be someone telling you something. You have to have what the Lord tells you. The Lord shows you. And you know. And that's where the awareness begins to... It it will be in that awareness, in that knowledge, in that um, understanding that the sons of light will truly come together in a level of oneness. There is no oneness, really, if one is following another. You know, well, go get the word from the Lord. Remember, that's how the Israelites were to Moses. Well, go get the word and come down. Well, and that's how it is for the church age. Well, bring us the word on Sunday. But this isn't the way of the day of spirit and of the day of the sons of God. There is no one that was going to go and get a word for you. You're to know. And in your knowing brings about the ability for the true oneness of the body. Oneness doesn't come just because we love one another and want to wash one another's feet and whatever. Oneness comes because of a commonality of vision. And you're in the harness together because the Lord is speaking to each one individually and that's where we are that's what we're pressing into someone once asked us well you and Anna have been married 45 years how how did you how did that happen pretty much because of the oneness of vision I would say that's 99% of it You know, there was a big 1% of other stuff, but 99%, that one vision, the commonality, God speaking, and that's where you come together in oneness with one another and with the Lord, because it is the Lord within each of us. Lord, we lose the spirit of awareness 
to break upon the sons of God. Lord, we loose your spirit, the spirit of awareness. Lord, let it stir us. Let it just fall upon us and permeate every part of our being, every part of our consciousness, every highway that still is within the, this mind. And bring us where we need to go, that we might finish this race, walking as prophesied in the book of Joel. They walked in a line, not thrusting one another through. And they would, you know, leap on the mountains and go through the windows and, you know, the fire out of their mouth. You know, all of the stuff. You, you know the prophecy. You can read it. It hasn't really happened yet. Because it's been waiting for a people that would rise in the oneness of the Spirit. And, and you could say, well, where's this oneness been? We talked about it in the first book, the manifestation of the sons of God. The oneness has been waiting for people that will have gone through the cross deep enough that they become of one mind and one heart and one vision. That happened at the day of Pentecost. It did. And that was a foreshadowing of what was to come. But in this day, the day of spirit, we don't say, you know, how does, I, how does the word go? Uh, you don't have to tell your brother or your sister to know the Lord. All will know the Lord from the least to the greatest, what not. The Lord speaks and you hear. And that vision is burned indelibly upon you. And that vision becomes the X factor that unites you with every other son that God is raising up and with the Lord. And then the sons of light truly walk in the strength of a oneness. Because it's born out of a commonality of vision and drive that has been deeply etched in the fabric of our being. And then you begin to see the promise. One puts a thousand, two puts two, ten thousand to flight. How about a host of the sons of God? I can't even imagine what that number would be in the power and the authority that would flow forth. But I don't mean to speak future tense. This is here upon us. It's time for it. It's time for it. I lose the spirit of awareness to dawn upon the saints of light and to possess them and overtake them, myself and Anne included, as we come up higher and as we come up higher, our frequency changes. And you know what? We'll have to go back, like we've said before, and write a book or write a manual or a detailed map and say, this is going to happen to you. Expect it. Well, I feel pretty strange. Yeah, your frequency just changed. And that's what this feels like. Because you're changing but I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. My carnal mind, I can't quite grasp it. You're telling me that as I die out and I become more like God, that my frequency, my vibration as a human being, as an entity, as a person before God, changes. Yes, I am. Well, what... Explain to me what that means. How does it feel? Does my body feel different? Does my body go through changes? Uh, what's happening to me? Well, we're still working that one out. We, we are still experiencing that one, of which we'll have to go back and write about it. 
but no small thing. How does, I think it's in Peter. He says, you know, don't think it's strange when you go through fires and ordeals as though some strange thing is happening. And you think, well, of course, that fires and ordeals, that's uh, the cross, battle, so on and so forth. Well, what about what happens to you when your personal frequency changes? That's got to have some something to it. It just doesn't, you know, it's just not like, okay, we decided to move you to channel 1234 instead of channel 1278. So you just move them over a channel. There's something more that happens to you. Because we know that we're on the path. We know that resurrection life isn't going to happen just in the, the, the path of a little change here, a little change there, and then gradually one morning you wake up and you've got resurrection life. Resurrection life is going to happen to you, and boom. But we know that in the process we're coming to a point where we will be positioned and are being positioned in God for that change to happen. So in the interim, what's happening? The sons are being birthed. They're being caught up to the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> Your present incarnation is not being caught up. But the glorified divine you is being caught up as you change. You see, it's all about change, right? You're not going through the work of the cross for, you know, for exercise. As you go through the work of the cross, you change, you die out. What's happening? Your frequency is changing. Your vibration is going higher. And I think you, the, the vibration thing, I think maybe you can understand. Because as your vibration goes higher, it's because you're letting go of the weights that have held you down. And so your vibration goes higher. And it's almost like, you know, we're, we're in the food business. So we look at foods. Some foods have certain frequencies or vibrations. Some that are really healthy. The vibrations are off the charts. They're really high. Very life-giving. And the ones that are dead or like fast food, if you go to eat fast food, there's not only no vibration, it's a negative vibration. You know, guaranteed to take your life, certainly not give. So, we're talking vibration. Now, let's switch that over. Frequency. Kind of goes hand in hand. As you change, your frequency is changing. I don't think we've understood what's happening to us. I don't think we've understood what's happening within us. I just know that, you know, you get up in the morning and here I'm talking personally and you just might feel like a truck ran over you. And, and then for the next week, you might feel like multiple trucks ran over you and you don't get it. It's like, well, I, I think I feel fine, but I, I don't get it. What's going on? Well, there's probably many things going on because we're in the battle of the ages, but not to diminish the fact that you are changing. Your frequency is changing. And, and we're still trying to understand it. You know, that's why you could, you could, you know, meet up with a friend you haven't seen in 10 years. Oh, I know you. Or they might say to you, but they have no idea who you are. You know. Anyway, I, I think that's good enough. We, we kind of belabored this point, but I think it's important that we understand that something is happening within us that we haven't understood because our frequency is changing. Look at it as though you're in a scientific lab under a, a microscope. And they're looking at you and it's like, huh, I looked at this, you know, sample two months ago and it had this frequency. Now it's got this frequency. How did that happen? Something's happening within us so far greater than we know. 
and the time of its appearing because it's the time of this word is beginning to happen to us. So I bless this word to you and I bless it to the cloud of witnesses. Lord, let this be for them as well until the final breakthrough. I know they're on the path with us. Lord, we thank you for the word. Thank you for the word. Amen.